All right. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another live stream. Today, we're going to be playing a Ultima Online version called uh, Ruins and Riches. And this is a single player uh, or a version of Ultima Online that was developed to be a single player experience. It's made to be super challenging and have tons of content in it. We'll call our guy Voxel. Why not? Voxel it is. Whatever. We're going to do advanced here. I want to go ahead and start off with... I want to be good at fencing because I know Majory. Majory is a, what we probably ultimately want to wind up with. But to start things off, like we're not going to have enough money to be buying all the reagents and stuff like that, I'm sure. So I know from just playing Ultima Online that getting like fencing and then getting like healing so we can heal ourselves probably a good idea. And we just got arms order zero. That's fine. We got to label three of them. And we're going to go ahead and start in you. Uh, you can read about this. So this map and this game is completely different than the Ultima Online you guys, you know, might have experienced, you know, if you played Ultima Online, even like a free server or whatever. This is a completely redone map uh, and everything like that. So we're going to go ahead and start here. So the first thing we're going to do before we actually get into it is we're going to go ahead and try to make our screen as big as we can here. We want to give ourselves a room to open our backpack and stuff and have our backpack open at all times. But we can do that here. All right. And then we want to show our skills. We want to have our skills popped out so we can see like combat and stuff like that if we want to do that. Uh, no. And then we also want to be able to see the map. So, put that here. So on the map, you can kind of scroll in and out, see points of interest and that kind of thing. So we see ourselves here. We have blackness all around. We have a river over here. Rags and riches. For you, the day was normal compared to any other. However, uh, but let me go ahead and do the sound here, guys. Let's do the sound at like 65. Let's music way down. 35. All right. Why? That should help. All right. One thing we want to do with the combat is we want to definitely want to uh, ha uncheck this. You don't have to hold tab for combat. I know that. Well, I went okay. All right, let's go ahead and go into this again. Ruins and riches. For you, the day was normal compared to any other. However, when the evening sun finally disappeared below the landscape, you retired to bed, where the uh, sleep felt restless and the dreams were more vivid. You cannot remember the details of the dream, but you can recall being drowned from this world through the swirling portal. When you awoke, you found yourself here in the forest. Your night clothes are gone, and you are now dressed in some medieval garb, wielding a light hand. So we're dressed weird in clothes we've never seen. When we wake up in this forest, that's pretty cool. Uh, through the darkness of the night, you see a campfire just ahead. A colorful tent is next to it, with the welcoming glow of lanterns about. The sounds of the nearby streams provides a tranquility, and you can see a grizzly bear soundly sleeping next to the warmth of the fire. Wow. If you were to shrug off the worries of your current life, you feel this would be the place to start anew. You decide to see who is camping here. Perhaps find out far. So there's your introduction to this single player mode. And we'll learn more about this mode here in just a few moments. 
So if anybody's ever played Ultima Online, uh, it is a very deep classic MMO. Uh, it came out in 1997. It's still running today, uh, 25 years later. Uh, it's still going. I don't really like the current version of Ultima Online. There's no way I would go pay you know, 13, 15 bucks a month for it. But the classic Ultima Online was amazing. Uh, back you know when it first came out until they introduced Bramble and a bunch of other crazy stuff that just were in the game in my opinion. But we're going to go ahead and start off here. To move, you won't use like WASD. You simply point your uh, finger here, your finger cursor, where you want to go. And then you hold right mouse button to move. Now to move quicker or run, you would just move your cursor further away. And you'll run. So you want to walk slow, like that, wherever you want to go. Pretty easy. And then to run again, move it further away. So as we move here, we see the fire that it was talking about. We see a sleeping bear. We hear the river. And we see this big tent. All right. So we walk in here and we see Allie, the gypsy. And we click on her. We can we cannot talk to her. Yet. Now we can talk to her because we're close enough. Please, Voxel, take a seat and we will begin. All right, so we sit down. Just like that. Uh, single click the gypsy and select talk to speak with her, right? So we have a tarot card table here and a gypsy ready to talk to us. I think this is a pretty cool little introduction. So we right, or we just left click on her, we choose ah. talk. And she's going to give us more information about, but we can't blow this up, about this uh, game. The Ruins and Riches. Greetings, Voxel. You are about to enter one of the many worlds of Ruins and Riches. Not too long ago, the stranger arrived in Sotharia and failed to uh, fail the evil plans of Exodus. Castle Exodus lies in ruins and Sotharia is once again at peace. To begin your journey, simply choose your fate from my deck of tarot cards. Begin by pressing the top right button right here. Um, once you look through the deck, pressing the arrow buttons, you can draw a card of your choice by pressing the OK button in the top right. There is a shelf over there with interesting potions that you may want. So if you want one, drink it now and return here for your tarot card reading. Okay, so let's go look at these potions here. Let's... uh over here and we see ocean shelf so humans are average most common race in the land so here we can change our race should we want to we can become a human we can become right here we can be become an aquatic we can become a completely different species um we can become a bugbear. So we can be a monster. We can even be a centaur. Holy shit. A demon. Evil. We would play out an evil role if we chose this stuff. A dracul. A fae that we could fly around. A gargoyle. A gnoll. Goblin. And we can be whatever alignment we want, like neutral, evil, or whatever. A golem. I'm sure some of them are only evil. Hobgoblin. Yeah, like the goblin was only evil. A wolf. A minotaur. So there is a lot to this game. You can be a mummy. Notice a mummy was only evil. We could be a fucking mushroom. Look at that. A fungal mushroom. A naga, whatever that is. I have no idea. Ogre. Orc. If you're an orc, you can be, only be a neutral, it looks like. You can be different kinds of orcs. There are all these different kinds of orcs you can... So, I think, like, if you are big into, like, Dungeons & Dragons, you're probably going to love this. 
uh, because I think there's a lot of D&D put into this single player uh, mode. Plant. A reptilian neutral. The different kinds of reptilians. Look at that face, look at those eyes. Akra. Can't be an evil reptilian. A rodent neutral. Salamander. A satyr is good. Serpent neutral. Lots of different serpents to choose from. Could be a fucking evil skeleton. A different kind of skeleton. Notice that all of them, the alignment is evil. And it's got some badass armor. There's a lot of different species that we could be here. Troll. I'm already a troll. Just saying. A vampire. A zombie. Different kind of zombie. You can choose, like, lots of different zombies. A lot of these species have different, you know, what you want to look like in the game. And then human is neutral. So we're going to stick with human, but I just wanted to show you that depth. And here's all the species if you just want to, like, if you wanted to be this one really quick, you could just do that, right? You don't have to scroll through all of them. All right, so we're good on that. I'm going to close out of that. And we're going to go back and sit down again. All right. Well, let's continue. Um, so we finished this paragraph here. Let's go ahead and continue. Now, let me tell you about some things of the world that fate has brought to you. Traveling the lands can be dangerous as other adventurers may decide to kill you for your gold or your property. Sounds like the law online. The taverns, inns, and banks are safe from such threats, but there are also many guards in the settlements to keep the peace. They have been known to quickly dispatch with murderers and criminals. There are many merchants throughout the land. They are not able to sell or buy everything they normally deal in as their choices of what they buy and sell change every day. There are secrets to be learned and magic items to be found in many dungeons. Each settlement in Cesaria is somewhat safe in the surrounding land, though hunting for food uh, or skin should be relatively safe. I cannot say such things of other worlds. There is a minor dungeon near each settlement in Cesaria. If you wish to begin traversing the dangers below, before you are fully prepared, be prepared uh, that the vile, or be warned that the vile creatures are not all that you face. There are also many deadly traps in the rooms and halls of these places that could kill you quicker than the monster you may be fleeing from. Interesting. Prepare to go forth and make your life your own. Become the finest craftsman in the land, a wealthy owner of lands and castles, the mightiest, the mightiest warrior, or even the most powerful wizard. Choice, yours. Ruins and Riches is a single or multiplayer adventure game of classic fantasy. It is a myth mythical world of simple survival and exploration. Like old pen and paper games of the past, the characters you create will do as they wish. They may be mighty warriors or powerful wizards. They may simply start a potion shop near a large city. They may be a master of beasts or a mystical... Uh, Hard. This is a world where great wealth and artifacts can be obtained from the dungeons throughout the land. You may be slain by a creature, die from hunger, get lost in the dark, or stumble into a deathly trap. You may find powerful relics and enough gold to build your own castle. You do not need simply play a human character. You can play an ogre, a troll, a satyr. There are many uh, creature races that you can choose from. If you want to investigate these things, look for my potion shelf behind me. There you will find various potions of alteration uh, that can alter your life. You can, uh, If you choose one of these races, consider changing your name to a better represent the creature you choose to play. This leads me to my final words of advice. 
This realm is best served if you have a name that is uh, commensurate with this rich fantasy world. You have one final chance to change your name if you need to by simply using my journal on the behind me. You cannot have a name that someone else already has, so it must be unique in ruins and riches. If you want to change your name, right click on this window and close it, and then proceed to the table where I keep my journal. Once your name is changed, return here for your final tarot card reading. So we're going to go ahead and keep our name. I'm fine with Voxel for now. And this here is telling you, basically, this is the tarot cards and it gives you information. But really what this is, is this is your starting location. The Devil, the Town of the Devil Guard. Um, the Village of Grey. Take this road, you'll enter a world in this village where the inhabitants during the Third Age of Darkness gave several uh, clues to the stranger. Uh, the Deafened Exodus. It was rumored that they sold ships that could fly to the stars. So you can read all about these different things. Uh, all these different places that you can go to. Yeah, that's really what this is. The Town of Moon. The Town of Mountain Crest. Snowy Landscape. Death. The Village of You. Life in a thick forest west of Britain. Yeah, this is where I think I'm going to start. Um, we have a lot of mountains surrounding us in a small town. And then you can go to Britain. Let's go ahead and go to the village of Yu. We're going to hit OK. And we appear here in Yu. And then we have a message of the day. We're going to go ahead and close with that. And I want to go ahead and show you guys real quick. When you download this single player version, if you should, it also comes with a PDF. And this Pretty cool. So the PDF tell, you know, gives you information on what the game is, how long it took to develop, and that kind of thing. Well, let's go ahead and take a quick look at this. Um, user Guide. Prepare yourself for Ruins and Riches. Ruins and Riches is a single or multiplayer adventure game that was liberally assembled and organized by Derjev. I don't know how you pronounce that name. I'm just going to call him Derjev. Uh, for almost a decade. The world consists of elements from various sources of ideas, graphics, maps, and animations, as well as some created by Derjev himself. The overall scripting is based on Run UO, but heavily modified by Derjev to create a new and unique experience. Although built off the Age of Shadows era of Garriott's online game, mechanics have been altered to provide new ways of doing things. So basically, Garriott's talking about Ultima Online. Some skills that were previously useless now have a purpose. Some unused spells were brought back to life or made to work in a single-player environment. Character class archetypes uh, have been enhanced, providing new ways to play and enjoy the game. The landscape has been changed to provide players with a huge area to explore. This version is a, a continuation of Jersey's game. It was branded as Ruins and Riches to pay homage to games like classic TSR Dungeons and Dragons. So that's why I say if you guys are Dungeons and Dragons fans, you might really love this. Uh, from which much of the methodology originates. The game takes place in an alternate universe to Gary, its other games. Again, an alternate universe to Ultima Line. Shortly after the events of his third game called Exodus, you can, cre you can create a character that tries to make their way through many lands. You'll have to find a way to feed yourself, to acquire equipment, to explore your way around. Everything you need to know can be learned within this virtual environment. Knowledge can be uh, acquired by talking to citizens of the land, or you may find a book or a scroll with clues and other information. There are also some commands that you can use to bring up additional information. The game is designed for characters to adventure alone, so this is a single-player experience. As, you know, you can play it, you can set it up to play with a couple of friends, but this definitely isn't meant to be played by, you know, 15, 20, or 100 people. You can even craft items from your home and then have them purchased by merchants the Merchants Guild if you choose to make your living that way. So basically what I'm saying is, in Ultima Online, you could set up vendors and you could sell your items to other players. Well, this version has been coded and made so that you could still sell things, but the AI is going to buy your items. That's pretty cool. Your default health, mana, and stamina are uh, valued at double the associated attributes, so if you have a strength of 50, your health will be 100. You can change this behavior in the settings file if you wish. You can also obtain the title of Grandmaster in 10 different skills, so a total of 1,000 skill points. 
which is uh, more generous than what they gave you in Ultima Line, where you could only have 700 total skill points. Uh, this should allow you to create a character archetype of your choice, like a wizard, fighter, thief, assassin, etc. There are other play options that have different skill levels, benefits, and detriments as well. This is built around older MUD mythologies and rules based on the early 1970s Dungeons & Dragons games. There is also an abundance of randomness inspired by roguelike games of the 1970s. The spirit of this game is simply to experience an exploration and discovery, with the open sandbox feel of an enormous virtual world. The realm consists of nine different lands, about 20 cities and villages, and over 100 dungeons to explore. Settlements sell their own goods and may change from time to time, but the merchants can be helpful in repairing or identifying items. Death brings with it penalties upon resurrection, either in the form of negative character effects or the parting of gold as a tribute to the gods that bring your uh, life back. That really reminds me of um, Bard's Tale, where if you died, you had to pay a huge fee to get to come back to life. You had to pay it right to the gods. Dungeons and Dragon, or the dungeons are filled with many hideous monsters, but they contain much treasure. They can be filled with many hidden traps with varying effects. Some may harm you with fire, lightning, or poison. Others may curse one of your items or simply make it vanish altogether. Wow, that's crazy. You could trip over a well-placed wire, uh, break your potion bottles or arrows. You could even be hit with a magical force that turns all of your coins into lead. Traps can perhaps be avoided by those skilled in such things, have magic that protect themselves from traps, or even have luck on their side altogether. Some even carry a 10-foot pole to set off traps safely, like setting off traps from a distance with a 10-foot pole. Like the games of yesteryear, this will have you slaying rabbits and deer as you work your combat skills to break further into the wilderness. The further you can explore, and the more dangerous the area, the better the rewards are. This is about finding treasure of a monetary and magical nature to aid you in your chosen path. It is also about resource management as you need a supply of food and drink if you plan to be gone for long periods of time. You will also be faced with dilemmas on how you will carry all of your found riches from the dungeons. Treasure is not just found in gold coins. You may find copper and silver coins which can fill your pouches quickly. You may find exotic furs, rare kegs of ale, unusual carpets, strange books, or finely crafted statues all of which can either decorate a home or be given to people in town in exchange for gold, which can be aided if you can identify the item. Uh, there are random quests in place that will have you traveling far and wide. Along with that, there is also a large quest inspired by the old computer role-playing game, The Bard's Tale. So I think a lot of people are going to like that, especially fans of those old Bard's Tale games. Harriet's lore has been incorporated into the game, but morph to fit with a potentially multiplayer environment. You can take on quests to defeat the Shadow Lords and create a gem of immortality. Good shit. You can also defeat the Banes and bring the Serpents of Chaos and Order back into balance. You can even work towards becoming the Titan of Ether. There are also many characters from the original game series that may give you quests in which the rewards will be custom artifacts. Sounds so cool. Player versus player mode is enabled for the game in case you decide to play uh, this a play this as a multiplayer environment. This will add danger as your friend may cast a fire field to stop the monsters and you accidentally walk into it as well. They also decide to kill each other's characters. Along with this, there are also areas called public areas. These are uh, small areas that have no player versus player mode as they are centralized to the world. So as an example, if you go into the bank and do your business, you will Go to the same bank that every other player goes into, no matter what town they're in. So basically, uh, all the banks of like different towns or whatever are going to take you to the same bank. So if you play this on a multiplayer environment, you may see your friends from time to time in these areas. When you leave the bank, you'll be back in the town you entered from. The other public areas are the Wizard's Guild, the Thieves' Guild, the Black Magic Guild, the Inn, the Tavern, and a few others. Because Ruins and Riches is widely expansive, these areas simply provide a way to run into other players. Some dungeons have difficulty levels, and you'll be notified of how difficult a dungeon is. So a Skeletal Knight in an easy dungeon will be much harder with a deadly dungeon. Makes sense? Treasure is scale-dependent on how the dungeon difficulty is. 
The dungeons in Cesaria are normal difficulty, as this is the main world where most characters begin. There are many other different elements that you will have to discover on your own. If you enjoy Tales of Conan or Fafrid or the Grey Mouser, uh, if you played older D&D games where the characters were in constant danger, if you like older computer role-playing games and want something uh, where you simply exist in a fantasy world, then go ahead and give this a try. It was designed to play many different types of character classes instead of just the common ones that most people play. You can be a very effective adventurer being a necromancer, an alchemist, a bard, a thief, or an assassin. You will get the most out of this game if you try different professions and see how you can navigate the dangers with them. There are a ton of things to do. Uh, so you just need to pick a path and go as the only goal of the game is do whatever you set for yourself. So then the rest of the PDF is basically how to set the game up, how to set up the server, um, how to add uh, like multiplayer, player login, that kind of thing. Your music options, if you want the new music or the old classic music and Ultima Line. And uh, a lot of other stuff is here. So pretty cool that they have the PDF in here as well. All right, so we started in the town of Yu, and if we look here, we see on our radar that we are down in a little town with a path headed out, surrounded by Rocky Mountains. All right, so we see in our bag that all we started with was 118 gold. We have a bag here, and the bag has a bunch of, like, an assortment of random food, it looks like, but the meat is at least cooked, so... Let's go ahead and eat this uh, chicken leg. We feel quite full. See if we're hungry, we should have a... Oh, we don't have any water in there. So we need to find some water. Find some fresh water here. And all these towns are going to probably be different from anything you've seen. These monsters here that are in town are probably a pet of one of these uh, NPCs. And I think it's really cool that these NPCs, these AI characters, will stand around town either hacking a, you know, butchering a corpse or basically talking to each other. Ooh. One thing that's really cool is if you go out and you'll say you slay a, a demon or something like that or a skeleton or whatever, you may come back through town to bank your stuff or whatever and you may see some of the NPCs talking about your good deed or that you died to a monster or whatever. Uh, and they'll be talking about your adventures. That's pretty, I think that's pretty neat. So the Iron Golem, sounds like a blacksmith shop. Go ahead and take a look in here. So here's the forge, here's the ingots, and you see we have a warrior's guild and a blacksmith's guild. So if you wanted to learn blacksmith or whatever, you could train. You could also train like different uh, combat skills from here. Or you can buy just like in good old Ultima Lion, you can buy items or sell items as well. Pretty cool. So, we do have, how much would it cost? I know that for playing Ultima Lion, that since we started as a fencer, a dagger is going to be really fast, but it's not going to be nearly, it's not going to damage as well as like a Chris would. And a Chris used to be like the best fencer item, or one of the better fencer items, obviously. A magical Chris or something like that would be even better. But you can see the stats on a dagger. Weapon speed is 2 seconds. Damage is 10 to 11. Requires a strength of 10. Let's see if we can find a Chris. Bye. There we go. It's only 32 gold as well. And it's still 2 seconds. Does only really, what, one more damage than a... I'm surprised it only does one more damage than a dagger but it is skill required as fencing how about a spear 13 to 15 but notice the weapon speed is a little bit slower at 2.75 seconds a chris is just as fast as a dagger which is kind of surprising yeah dagger is not exactly that bad 10 to 11 so yeah it only you only have a chance of doing one more damage with a Chris. Is it really worth 32 gold? It is a one-handed weapon. Durability 63. What is the durability of our dagger? 40. Let's go ahead and buy the Chris. Get that chance of an extra damage done. I used to love playing with Chris's as a fencer in Ultima Line. 
We'll just double click that. As we have 118 gold available, we have plus 32 for the Chris. Now, we have us a badass weapon. Over here crying. Yeah, he thanks you for your patronage. Buying his merchandise. We have an innocent dog over here. This is a healer. We do want to get some bandages uh, because we definitely want to heal ourselves. In the, like in Ultima Online, if you started off with healing, the game would start you off with like at least 100 bandages. But we don't have that here. And there we go. I do see some fresh water. Let's go ahead and fill up our uh, fill up our water skin here. I think we just double click the water skin. Yep. And as long as you're standing next to fresh water, you'll fill it up. Now we have 10 drinks remaining. Let's go ahead and take a drink. Are you drink the water and are no longer thirsty? So now we have nine. If we double click it again, will we fill it up? We do. Okay, cool. What's up, Holmes? How are you? We can talk hey. to him. And you can see that it gives you a lot more depth when you just talk to your local NPCs than Ultima Online ever did. Thou art going to be hurt. Greetings, Voxel. My name is Lawler. He's a Lawler, huh? Like LOL? There are probably a few things you need to know about our group. We will heal you for free, but only every so often. We will see that you are uh, in need and help. Death is another matter. To summon spirits from the dead is an exhausting task, as any good wizard will attest. If your spirit does find its way here, it will require a donation uh, to our order to help you out. It is a small contribution to return to the land of the living, to be sure. The gods will resurrect you on their own. But to, uh, to, but the toll on your body will be great if you allow them to do that. There are also shrines around the lands. These places not only allow one to tie their gold, but also to resurrect the soul. These shrines will require the same amount of gold or tithing that we would, but the shrines may be closer to your corpse than we are. We have heard rumors of res resurrection potions and even a mixture one could make with witchery brewing. That could bring a soul back to life. We don't see such things, so it is hard to be sure. Maybe you will have better luck in such matters. If you are leery uh, of the use of magic and healing, bandages could be the best item you carry with you. Some have gotten so good at healing with bandages that they are known to cure off poison or bring them back from the dead. Use bandages easier. You have a couple of options. You can use the built-in macros for banding yourself or others. Another option is a bandage, band self, or band other commands. Either works fine and could possibly save your life. No matter how the riches, uh, how one reaches their end, their spirit will be guided. So basically, I, I like how this game, rather than just giving you, you know, a couple of little lines like Ultima Line did, there's a lot of depth even just talking to these NPCs. So if we come here, we can see that this guy sells bandages for two gold apiece. Um, I'm going to wait on that. I'm just going to right click out of it. And we're going to see if we can make bandages ourselves. We'll see if we can come across like any sheep or anything and get uh, wool that we can turn into cloth. But to do that, we need to find a tailor shop. And speaking of a tailor shop, we found one right here. Oh. So again, we can talk to this guy, and again, it's the same kind of thing as what we saw with the uh, the healer. Gives you more information than you would get in a normal online game. You can buy... We can buy dyes, we can buy... Notice we can buy dyes, but we can't buy the dyeing tub that's required to color your clothes. Pretty cool. Let's see if this guy actually sells a dying tub. He does. So the other guy has a dying tub and the dice. Which I'm not really worried about changing the color of my clothes right now. But if you find like wool on sheep, so all you have to do is double click any bladed item in your inventory or item that you're building. And double click the sheep. You have to be near it. And you'll get wool. You can bring the wool to a spinning wheel. Double click the wool. Click the spinning wheel. 
And, uh, I think you double click a spinning wheel, then it'll have you target the wool. And then you'll spin the wool into yarn. Take the yarn over to, uh, this device, and, uh, then it'll make cloth out of it. And from cloth, you can basically cut that into bandages. Alright. You grown foods. So you and Ultima Lion is known for big, thick trees. And I'm sure that's going to be the same thing here. Yeah, I love just all these people just standing around like, you know, like online players would do. Typically when you play this game online, you would players just standing around shooting the shit all the time, especially in the towns. Yeah, here's the big thick yew trees he's known for. So this guy is a... I can't even talk to him, but it might be because we're too far away. So this is a random shit. So this might be where, you know, if you die or you conquer a dungeon or whatever, people might talk about this kind of stuff. So here we have... This guy hacking up a uh, cow for meat. Oops. One thing I want to look at here is the options. Um, let's show the hit points of... Well, it's just a line rather than showing a percentage of people so we know where the hit points are at of monsters and stuff like that. Taking a quick look at some of my options here. Form skills. We want to know when all skills go up by even a decimal. Video. Yes. Enable mouse wheel for zooming. There we go. Okay. Here, let's go apply. See if we can zoom in and out. So we hold control. We throw our mouse wheel. Notice how pixelated it gets if you zoom in, but now that is cool that you can zoom, look how far you can zoom out. That's fucking cool, that'll probably come in handy. Amazing. Like that. That's something you could definitely couldn't do in Ultima Line. That I know, anyway. So again, we just have all these random people standing around, sitting around, whatever. I overheard someone tell of a valley of Cyclops in the Savage Empire. It's completely random shit. So we could use the sawmill here if we went and hacked some down some trees or whatever. I don't think we can get these apples. We're out of the town, but I guess they're too close to other NPCs or whatever. Wow, we got a very thick forest here. So the first thing we want to do is we want to try using our fencing skills and see how we perform. I'm going to be bold and we're going to try to take on a panda. You can drag their health bar off of them. And then I should be able to hold tab, go into combat mode, and then simply double click the health bar. Yep, and it's coming after me. We are going to fight. Let's get over here so we can see. And let's drag my health off here. Oh shit, he's already doing more damage to me than I'm doing to him. Yikes. Yep, I think I bit off more than I could chew here. Okay, we don't have any bandages. We definitely need to find some bandages so we can heal ourselves during combat. Oh, man. Ooh, this is a close fight. This is a close fight, guys. Yeah, I think we're gonna die. Oh, it's gonna be close. Oh, 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 one more hit, one more hit, one more hit, one more hit. Oh, man, we barely survived that. Look, we have... Yeah, we have, like, less than five health left, for sure. So, this is where we need healing. Okay, so let's go ahead. We just have a dead bear corpse here. If we double-click our blade, we should be able to target this. And now, in the corpse, if we double-click on him, we have some hides, which we can take over here. We have some raw ribs, which we can put in our backpack. And we have six fur. Now, all this stuff can be heavy, 
So we're probably going to want to bank this kind of stuff pretty often. And if we click on, if we just hover our cursor over our backpack, it'll tell us that we're carrying 108 stones. And if we click on status here, this should show us... Yeah, we can only carry 310 stones, and right now we're carrying a total of 141 stones. So, the backpack, there's 111 stones in the backpack, you see. But the other 30 probably comes from the Chris and the lantern that we're carrying, and the clothing, etc, etc. So what we need to do, guys, is these fucking hides, I know this, they're really heavy, they're like 5 stones piece. But if you cut them, you'll have the same amount of leather, all you need to do is have a pair of scissors. And the, in Ultima Lion, I think the game gives you a pair of scissors if you choose healing as one of your starting skills. But we need to find a provisioner or somebody in town that can tell us a pair of scissors so we can cut these fucking leather hides up and do pieces, usable pieces of leather. Welcome to the stream, everybody. It looks like the internet has stabilized a little bit. Knock on wood. I hope it stays that way. Carpenter. Uh, mage. A magic shop. We are not doing anything with magic right now. Taylor. Maybe a tailor has a pair of scissors I can get. Hey, bra, you got some scissors, motherfucker? Yep, scissors. 11. We definitely need those. Okay, and... That's all we need from that guy. Go ahead and accept. Thanks for the pat your patronage for the 11 gold. Betcha, our scissors right here. So watch this. So with these 12 pieces of leather hide, 60 stones, if we double-click on our scissors, we cut the hides... And now we cut them into usable leather, and instead of being five stones a piece, they're one stone a piece. So, we also want to go ahead and check out our bank box. And our bank, our bank in this game is not... Remember how a bank is a centralized spot no matter what town you're in. So what we need to do is we need to find the inn. That's probably right where we started. Well, we started on this bridge. Blacksmith. Town crier. We have a farmer. The dungeon's chest. That's probably the bank right there. Go in here. There we go. There's a bank. Yep. And this is a banker. So you can either come up to a banker, and you can say, open my bank box, or you can simply type bank. And here's your safe, basically, stash, where you can store all your crap. So we're going to go ahead and... For now, we're just going to go ahead and get rid of this. We'll probably want to sort this stuff out and buy, like, different backpacks and stuff like that. We don't want to carry all this stuff around with us all the time. Um... And you might want to bank your gold as well. Okay, so we have our meat and stuff in there. But that's a cool way to keep all your stuff safe and so you're not having to drag all your shit around all the time. Found the bank. And every little town should have some kind of a bank. Well, I thought it was the inn, but uh, no. So what we need to do is we need to find need to find sheep, to be honest. Let's uh control. Let's zoom out a little bit more so we can see sheep a little bit easier. Maybe. From a distance. Yeah, we're definitely not wanting to buy bandages at two gold each. So there is uh, one of your shrines that they were talking about. The healer was talking about.
My guess is we're gonna run into some kind of monster before we find a sheep. Gorilla, a panda. Words. Lots of animals out here. Okay, let's also look for, like, farms here on the map as well. Because little farms would probably be a good place where there might be several sheep. I don't see anything on the map. But you can find, like, wandering... Oh, shit! Like I told you, we run into a giant fucking... Yeah, we don't. We want to stay far away from that motherfucker. We will be dead in a hurry, I'm sure. An eagle, skeleton. Are we taking on a skeleton? Oh, well, he's after us. Hacking a skeleton. Drag our health off. Oh yeah, we got this guy. problem. Hopefully you guys are enjoying my content here. Be sure to let me know. I like how he runs for me. Got a horse there. If we had aiming, we could tame it. Ooh, we got some grave dust. That in our backpack. Silver coins. 15 copper coins. That guy just spawned. Do we have a bone skirt? What kind of armor does that give us? It's only 28 durability. It's, I do remember bone armor being pretty fragile. But physical resistance, 3%. Strength requirement, 55. I should have that, right? Hmm. May I have to take my pants off? There we go. Nice. Elephant, holy cow, that thing is big. Mountain goat. Dove. Oh, giant hawk, shit. Red, so it's probably gonna, if it sees us, it's gonna come after us. We might take on something like that if we had some bandages. We could heal ourselves during combat. He's dead. Oh, we got some bone legs here. Nice. Oh, do we have to? Oh, we probably have to take her off. Nope. Gonna take the skirt off. Yep. So to drop the, make sure sure you drop it all these things on top of each other rather than having multiple different piles of like copper or whatever. What I like to do is like just drop the copper into your bag like that. That way it'll automatically go into your the same pile. Something I learned while playing all them online that helps. Same thing like with this craven dust. We're not gonna take that part. Probably completely use extra weight we don't need. I don't think anybody would buy it. I mean there might be somebody in the game that would buy it, but I don't know. Okay, so we do see a couple of establishments here, and we do have another town. Okay, cool, cool. Looks like a bigger town than the one we started in. Around there. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to check out... We're... Let's check out the one on the right first. Zebra! That, look how cool that zebra looks. Let's zoom in. Shall we zoom in? Have you ever seen a zebra in Ultima Line, Christian? Look. Isn't that cool? I 
I like you can just zoom in on this uh, line. A lot of the mechanics work the same as like Open Online. Go, go, be farm or something here. Butter. Well, oh, these guys got horses. Oh, look at this! We could come into this farm and we pick some easy tomatoes. Right? Is that a tomato? Yep. Well, that's just extra food for us for free. In case we run out. Double click it to get it. Oh, can we get these carrots? Are they not? Oh, they are already. Please. Get all the horses as well. Alright. Come in here and shear our sheep. Not our sheep. Whatever sheep. So again, you're just going to double click your blade. If you're close to it. And we'll get... Five wool per sheep. Oh, that would come in handy. Oh, come on. Well, let's go ahead and make a couple of macros real quick, guys. Come into options, make a macro. We're going to make a new macro here. And we're going to call this one Use Last Wool. And we're going to simply say on this one, we're going to come down the list and we want to say last object. And that's all we want for that one. And we're going to drag this down. I did this earlier. I learned how to do it. Apply. Be able to drag this off. We have to hit OK first. Option. Yeah, there we go. So we can put this here. And then we'll make another macro later, but I'll show you kind of how, how this makes it easier. So rather than coming up here every time and hitting double clicking our blade, we can simply say use last tool, double click it, and now it's saying, you know, what do you want to use this uh, item on? So we're going to go ahead and click that sheep. And we're going to double click use last tool again. It's just easier to click this than to click our blade. I think it is anyway. And we'll show you how macros can make things uh, a lot easier as well, especially if we start mining later on, which I plan to do. Okay, we are... what town is this? I didn't know. Guards. Oh, there we go. City of Britain. We are in the city of Britain, guys, and we can tell by the size here on the map. I like that you can zoom in. But yeah, we can tell that this Britain is nothing like the Britain in Ultima Online, which is a massive city. We have another gypsy here. Again, people sitting around the campfire. That's so cool. And we did kill a couple of skeletons, so don't be surprised if we see people in here talking and say something about... Oh, did you hear about Voxel killed skeletons out in the forest or something? That's kind of cool, I think. If you see that. Okay. Bits? Be spitting that, bitch. Be spitting at me, motherfucker. Fuck you up. I heard rumors about a ghost haunting these ruins in the Savage Empire. Right? The Bank of Britain. Here you go. So if we wanted to bank some of this stuff, we could do that. But we're going to take a look around before we bank anything. Carpenter. But I want to show you guys real quick, let's go back up to this bank, and I'll show you, but it'll take us right to that same bank that we were at earlier. Yeah, see? Remember that same bank? So, different town, but we go right back to the same bank. Yep, everyone listen, Voxel the Apprentice Fencer entered the village of you. Uh -uh. Yep, so that was where I started, we're in Britain now. We got down here, we got a tailor. So the tailor is exactly what we need right now because we want to turn our wool into cloth. So 
again, you come to the spinning wheel, you double click your wool, and I believe you just target the spinning wheel. Yeah. So we stun all our wool into 60 rolls of yarn. I like this a lot better than Ultima Lion because on Ultima Lion you have to like keep double clicking the wool. I do believe, like many times, depending on how many piles of wool you have, you have to do it over and over and over again. And you click on the spinning wheel and it, it'll say something like, Oh, you've almost got a yarn. Keep, what you know, and you have to just keep working at it. So this is a lot quicker and easier. Definitely like that. So we'll double click our yarn now and we'll use it on this item here. Um and now we got really easy, we got twelve bolts of cloth. Okay. So now we could probably sell the cloth to this guy, he'll probably buy it. No, he only wants the scissors. What about this guy over here? Will he buy our cloth? No. No. Okay, so these guys don't want my fucking cloth. So we're going to go ahead and use our scissors. We're going to cut all this cloth into... Like that. And then we're going to cut it all again. And we just made 600 bandages. So we'll want to bank some of these bandages. But one thing we want to do here, guys, is we want to buy some bags. So that we can start sorting our shit in our... Um, there's a provisioner. They should have bags. So we can start short sorting the shit in our um, bake box. So we want to buy... See what kind of bags or boxes they have. The bags cost 6 gold. A giant bag at six gold. An enormous bag at eight gold. But that's just how big it is. Like, they hold the same amount. Yeah, 125 items, 400 stones. So I would definitely buy the smaller bags because you can get more smaller bags in your um your bank box. Bagger, bread, we have food. I don't buy any of our vegetables. Maybe. Ice. Alright, let's well, first of all let's see if this guy will buy any of our shit. No, they want to buy our water skin. Hell no. You know you can buy you can have my fucking candle for one. Okay. Go ahead and buy. We're going to buy some bags, and I'll show you what you can do, it's pretty cool. We're going to buy... Oh, you only they only have three bags, so we can only buy what they have. So now we want to go back to that tailor, and we want to see if we can buy some dyes and a dyeing tub. I don't look exactly great with my shirt and bone armor, but hey. Yeah, don't expect the bone armor to last very long. It is very fragile. Oh, he's still... 30 on that, and then we had... What else did we have? We had... Oh, we already have bone scare, but we yeah. don't use it. Alright, let's go ahead and buy... Dyes. Do you have a dying tub? Oh. I saw a dying tub. Oh, I saw it wrong. Alright, we know we're going to need the dyes. Do you have a dying tub, bruh? I see. Nobody has a dying tub here. Fuck. Um, do you guys have a dying tub I can use? Sometimes they'll have a dying tub sitting around that you can just double click if you're on. A basement. Kit. I don't have a dying tub down here, dude. Rip it me. Born. Wow. Interesting.
Alright, we're gonna get out of here. The cool little dungeon or whatever. Hmm. Alright. So we know we need a dying cub, and we're not gonna get one here. It doesn't look like we're gonna have to go back to our own town or find another town or whatever. But let's go ahead and come back into the bank. And what I like to do, especially like Ultima Line, is I like to sort my shit out instead of just having big piles of shit like I have here. Um, bags. That bag. Bags we bought. One. We only bought three. Bag. This is our bag of food, right? Oh no, this is a one of these bags or a bag of food. There's our bag of food. So we want to keep this bag. Here's another. So rather that you can kind of sort this shit out. So we can put like our leather, for example, some of our materials like this in this bag. Kind of keep things organized a little bit. And then what I like to do is when I have a dying tub and it dies, I like to color them so it's even remember what's in what. Right? Oh, we got a dungeon right here. The Britain Mines. Oh, it looks a lot different than the Britain Mines in Ultima Line. Sure. Doesn't look like there's any mobs or anything down here. And this is huge for a mining area. Holy cow, for one player? Remember, this game was built for one player. This is massive area to fucking mine in. Wow. like bigger than the mining area in the Ultima Line game that hundreds or thousands of people could play. Yeah, you could mine your ass off in here. And mining is something you want to do if you want to make your own weapons and be like a blacksmith or, you know, make, basically make money too. You probably make quite a bit of money. But is there, there is a forge in here. Nice. That makes things easier. Uh, pickaxes? Double. Or spade. They call it an or spade for 10 gold. Pickaxe. Durability 38. Digs up iron ore only. Uses. 50. Well, we could use the shovels first. They're a hell of a lot cheaper. Because we'll only be getting iron ore anyway. Until our skill gets way high. That's cool. And these weigh less as well, right? Five stones compared to a pickaxe. It's how much? Uh, Eleven stones, yeah. The shovels weigh a lot less as well. Okay. Very cool. Alright, so let's, uh, fuck it, let's buy a couple of shovels. We have gold. Wink. Uh, they're 10 gold each. Let's buy four to start with. Alright, good. Now how much do we... Now we only, we're down to 78, wait. Do, we're gonna call this macro, we're gonna say new macro, and we're gonna say use last target. We're gonna just say use target
So here we're simply going to say come from our list. Oops, not a moat. Last object. And then we want to add another one. Say target last or whatever it is. Last target. Act last. Last target. Alright, let's apply. And hit OK. No, oops, I forget to get a shortcut for it. Go. Target last. Here. Rid of it. Oh, it's still saying where do we want to dig? Let me not work it. Wait. Back into our option. Go to our macros. Look at this one again. Okay, so instead of saying last target here, let's go ahead and have it go nut. Oops. Add. We'll have a wait for target and we'll add another one. And then we'll say last target and see if that works. Target. Apply. Now let's see if we target the same. There we go. So now instead of having to double click our shovel and double click the same spot every single time, we can just double click this and do the whole process. Makes it a lot easier. And our strength has went up. You see that we're gaining skill in mining. We haven't found any ore yet. You know. Right. I mean, this game is going to be really grindy, so you might as well make it easier. Drop this here. We're still getting gains on the skill so quick. Remember, our mining started out at zero here, guys, like 20 minutes ago or whenever we started this. Drop the ore off. In fact, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and actually put this in our backpack. Let's take one at a time. I learned this in Ultima Line as well. Because if we try to double click on all 20 ore, if our skill is really good and we can, you know, make ingots out of it, that's fine. It's a lot quicker. But if you if your skill is not high enough yet or it's right on the line of being able to make ingots or not, you want to do them one at a time. That way you don't waste all your ore in one shot. Yeah, so we wound up with less usable metal. Our mining skill does go, did go up though, so that does tell us for sure that mining in this game is what it takes to smelt the ore. And then again, yeah, we burned away, we didn't wind up with any ingots. So I don't know how much higher our mining has to be. You get ingots. You smelt the ore, removing the impurities, and put the metal in your backpack. So we're there, we're right in the line. So that was one ore and we got two ingots. Very nice. So that means we're probably almost to where we need to be to start being able to smelt this ore into ingots. That's nice. I thought we might have to have a lot higher skill. Well, this hasn't taken as long as I thought it would to be able to start getting ingots. The grind's not near as bad as I thought it would be. Very rewarding. I can't tell you how rewarding this is. Oh, so yeah. So if we put all this ore, see how we're overburdened now? It'll tell us we're overloaded. If we try to move right now... Um, yeah, see this is our stamina right here. See our stamina is going down and we can't move. The one thing I want to see is if I take this ore out... And if I just pick it up and walk with it... Yeah, we can't just walk with it like that either. But one thing I can do is I can... Okay, I need to wait. So I got a little stamina back where I can even walk myself. Let's go ahead and throw this pile of ore onto that pile of ore. And now we got 59 ore right there. Obviously way too heavy to carry ourselves. But what we can do is we can just kind of keep moving it, like grabbing it and throwing it, basically. 
Now we threw it in that pile. We have a big pile of 74 ore. And we're going to throw it as far as we can. Now we're going to come right between these. See if we can pick this up. Throw it here. We did. Now we have 89 ore. Again, some, this is something I learned in Ultima Online. Alright. Throw that on that. It worked. 103 ore. So it's a slow process, but it does work to allow you to get... So, people would do this in, like, Ultima Online. They would have a massive pile of fucking ore and other players playing the game, right? And people would do, be trying to do this, like, in the mining areas. And then somebody would come along and just fucking take their ore that, like, maybe was really strong or whatever, and they could pick up all the ore. And somebody would be trying to move it like this to a forge to you know, melt it into igots, and then somebody would come along and just steal their fucking big pile of ore or whatever that they were trying to move, put it in their backpack, and... Usually miners weren't very good at fighting, because, you know, they put all their skill points into mining and smithing and shit like that. So usually the thieves that would go and steal their ore would be a lot better fighters or be mages or whatever. So a lot of times the miners would get pissed off and attack whoever stole their ore, or they'd say something like, you know, they would type something like, Give it back! You fuck! Or whatever, right? Just give it back, you fuck! The other guy would just type, usually like, LOL, fuck you or something, my ore or something. And then the fucking miner would get pissed off and attack them, and give right- A lot of times the people stealing the ore wouldn't even fucking want the ore, they were just trying to troll the fucking miner and start to, you know, piss them off, because they know how, how time-consuming mining is. And so then, the miner would attack the fucking thief, and then the thief would easily kill the miner, and then, all of a sudden, now the miner, instead of getting just getting all the ore, now the miner kills, I mean, the miner gets killed by the thief, and now, on the corpse of the guy that got mad and attacked, he dies, and so now he drops all his ingots and all his fucking shovels and everything else on his backpack. And then the thief laughs even harder. Yeah, that kind of shit happens so much in Ultima Lion, it's not even funny. Fun game, though. Yeah, let's we'll see how overburdened we are if we put all this shit on our backpack. <laughs> the container could not hold more weight. It didn't even allow us to, but for a moment we saw it say 1,303. Yeah, you see that right there while I'm moving this around? It's 1,303. That is a heavy pile of fucking ore. How you doing, uh, Blake? What's up, buddy? Hundred and twenty one ore, nice. Okay, let's go ahead and move all this ore here just to reset it. So hopefully it doesn't fade out. Okay. Let's go back down here where we were. And keep mining, getting more ore, and hopefully get our skill up enough. I feel like once we get our skill up to like forty five or fifty, we'll probably be able to get ingots like almost every time. So remember, these shovels will only give us iron ore, but they were a lot cheaper than pickaxes, so once we use all these shovels up, we'll probably buy at least one pickaxe and see if we can start getting some different colored kinds of ore, like dull copper and copper and stuff like that. I'm having a blast. You guys might think this is boring or whatever, but no. Like, I tried. I was watching a friend play. They were streaming Stardew Valley. And I was like, I kind of looked at it and I was like, man, this fucking looks boring or whatever. But I was like, I'll try it. Maybe it's super fun or whatever. And I tried playing Stardew Valley for a couple hours a couple of days ago. And I'm just like, like, I streamed it for an hour. And then I tried playing another hour off stream. And I just couldn't get into Stardew Valley at all. But I'm having a blast playing this. I'm really enjoying playing this. And this is probably because I've played Ultima Online before, and so I know kind of that there's going to be dungeon crawling. 
And this particular version of Ultima Online is going to have all kinds of dungeons I've never been into, all kinds of creatures I've never fought before, whatever, all kinds of quests and stuff like that I've never done. So I'm really looking forward to it, and I know it's, there's going to be a lot of that kind of stuff. Uh, 295, let's just go ahead and take this ore over by our forge. I can carry it all. But yeah, I know there's going to be a lot of fun adventuring and monster killing and dungeon exploring and stuff like that. Yeah, I would hell of a lot rather play this in Party Valley. Where was I mining at around here? Get used to the left of the shovel. There's 40. You guys have watched me go from zero mining to 40 mining. You guys are loyal and dedicated. Couple's about to break. Only have one shovel left. Fine. I feel like we might be yeah, a shovel broke. We have one shovel left. Um, I feel like we might be able to, we might get close to fifty skill before we we go buy more tools. I really want to go to a blacksmith and buy the smithing skill. So I'm not starting so low, trying to craft the lowest common item. You can only buy your skill up to probably like 30 or 40 or something. So no point left. 118. Pile. Putting this ore on this probably updates everything, but I like I wanna just wanna go ahead and move. Make sure that I'd be pissed if 153 ore got disappeared. Forty five use. Wonder how long it takes. In Ultima Online, also, these veins refresh, like, every five minutes. But there's a lot of people playing Ultima Online, you know. Um, so the, the, you do want the veins refreshing with ore pretty quickly. In this game, I have a feeling it's going to take hours for these veins to refresh. Yeah, I'm really kind of surprised they made such a big, safe mining area down free of monsters. Mainly because Ultima Online, especially back in Classic UO, mining was known to be dangerous. Most of the good mining areas had monsters spawning all around. And not only that, in big mining areas, other players were a big threat. So to make a completely safe mining area in uh, this game is kind of surprising. Down a little bit. Should be able to combine these two together to get another ore. Okay, we succeeded that time. And ingots. Yeah, see, we only got one ingot that time. So I think we're going to keep doing these one at a time for now, because I don't want to fucking try it all at once and waste a bunch of ore. Yeah, see, we failed again. We're at 11 now. Blink. And we keep failing here. Too bad it doesn't give us skill gains more on trying to smelt. 
Yeah, we did get a skill gain there. Keep fucking failing here, man. Let's try to do five at once and see... Let's just go for it. We're hoping we get ten fucking ingots here. Yeah, we did. Up to 22 ingots. Let's do five at a time and see how that works first. Work that time. Maybe the maybe with bigger piles you have a better chance. Yep, we're three for three on the big piles. Four for four on piles of five or bigger. Five for five. I think we're learning the learning the intricacies of this uh, six for six. So it looks like smelting piles of ore at least five at a time is gives you a better chance of succeeding than trying to do one ore at a time. Oh, we failed that time. That's okay. As long as we're succeeding, like, 50% of the time or whatever, I'm okay with that. I just want to go slow like this, because if I try to smelt it all at once and I fail, I think half of it will be disappeared. That would suck. I like that. So. We failed again. Failed again. Failed again. We failed four times in a row there. Adding these little bits of ore is kind of tricky. There we go. We're up to 107 ingots, though. You did. Failed. Failed. Failed again. Fuck, oh, dude. Quit failing, motherfucker! Man, we keep failing here now. Oh, they succeeded. 121 ingots. And we're probably gonna fail a lot about with blacksmithing as well, so this is why we want to get as much metal as we can. Why I'm not trying to go for it all at once. We are getting pretty good mining gate. Oh, another thing I really like about this guys is I can play blackjack in this game. So with my gold, I can go into the inn. And I can play Blackjack. You guys know how I made the best BJ. So I can actually gamble my gold on Blackjack. Game. That's pretty fucking cool. Love that. Failed again. Quit failing, motherfucker! Alright, I'm gonna get greedy here. I'm gonna go for 50 at a time and hope I don't fail. Come on. Good. I made it. We're up to almost 300 ingots. Nice. Let's go 50 again. Doesn't take all day. Perfect. Yeah, I'm starting to get greedier now. Perfect, though. Three for three on the big chunks at a time. 50 again. Can I be four for four on big chunks? Perfect. Fuck it, let's go for the last 73 all at once. Perfect. 745 ingots, that's amazing. A lot better than I thought I would do smelting that shit. But that's why I waited until I used all four, all those eight shovels with all the money I could afford uh, to smelt it all, because I wasn't want to smelt it like one pile of 20 at a time, because I knew I would have burned it all up at lower skills. 
creepy item. Ooh. And that has a durability of 37. Of course, this is a 4%. Where, Where this motherfucker? Yeah. Alright. But we can't make a tunic, right? Or the leggings. Oh, 36.7. We need 37 to have a chance to make Alright. Well, let's make daggers, I guess, and sell them. Get our skill up. You won't buy the assassin's daggers, so let's uh, make daggers. We have a 65% chance of making it. So we'll make it. We failed. Dagger, 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 where? Creepy item, so that should be worth five gold. Is our skill going up? Our skill's not going up at all. Oh, there it is. Going up point one. Arms lower went up. Another small increase. Point six. Crazy wild creature. Some magic, probably. I think we can outrun anything that's trying to hit us. But like if it's a fighter that can web us up, something magical. The corpse of Ammo the Cleric. Wow, we just came across a corpse. That's cool. 143. 34 bolts of cloth. Holy shit, we just hit the jackpot. A curious magic. A war note. A repeating crossbow. Bizarre jar of reagents unidentified. Yeah, I think we got fog guys. In pixie skulls. Odd item. Nemesis. Bad. Meanies. I don't know what a Pegasus is, or... <laughs> I'm curious if a Pegasus will attack me. Seems like it is. Neutral. Like a Gabriel or anything else. I know what I'll do. I'll train it. Tame it. <laughs> Creature cannot be tamed, period. Oh shit. The Pegasus is gonna go fight that. I wanna watch this fight. Look at this. This fucking Pegasus is fighting this tarantula. This is what I'm talking about, guys. This game is cool. And look at this, this Pegasus is fucking this tarantula up. Now I know a tarantula kicked my ass earlier. Well that shows you how strong the Pegasus is. Yeah, we don't want to fuck with a Pegasus. Like it made short work of that tarantula. And it healed itself. Wow. Pegasus is pretty fucking strong. And it went right after that tarantula. Thank you, Pegasus. <laughs> My friend, man. Oh fuck! Oh, and it felt it saw me. Pegasus, save me! I will love you if you save me, Pegasus. Oh, it did! Pegasus is saving my ass. This is so fun. Look at these spells it's casting on this motherfucker. Wow!
So we've learned something out in the forest. If you know where a Pegasus is, and you start getting chased by some kind of a baddie, just fucking leave that baddie right to the Pegasus. The Pegasus will probably fuck it up. Dude, thank you so much. I love you. <laughs> we can't do anything to it. We can't friend it. We can't aim it. Oh, why don't we do that? That's fucking awesome, man. We already tried killing an elephant. We had no chance of that. There we go. Animal trainer. Oh my god, what the fuck is this? A giant pumpkin? What the fuck? Uh, oh? What the fuck? That thing is overgrown? What the hell happened to that? A large pumpkin. We can put it in our backpack. Let's put this motherfucker in our backpack. I can't reach that. What the fuck? 406! A hundred stones! The motherfucker weighs a hundred stones. What? I have never seen anything like that in a moment. This is this game is so cool, man. This game is awesome. I'm having so much fun with this. And I haven't even started exploring dungeons or anything yet, guys. I feel like I haven't even begun the game. And I'm already coming across so much shit that's really cool. Like the Pegasus, like the dead corpse that we found, that we found good loot on. We made the most money on the dead corpse that we came across. The Pegasus that we saw kicking evil creatures' ass. And then like this giant pumpkin here. Wow. This super cool game, what's it? All right, let's go see if we can learn animal painting. We can get a horse. Teach me taming. Brain droidism. 303. How about 299? All I got. I mean, if you want to buy something, you have nothing I'm interested in? Okay. So now I have 31.1 taming. I paid her all my money. And we are gonna go try to tame one of your horses here. Hmm. Druidism, I mean? Whatever. Where are you? Yeah, it's weird my animal taming isn't going up. It's my druidism. Weird. This is so much different. A lot of this stuff is so much different than than uh of them online. Okay, so if I if I close this, if I click on druidism, which animal should I look at? At your skill level you can only lure tamed animals. Okay. Hmm. So druidism is probably like your understanding of animals or something. Bell to tame the creature. Son of a bitch. What a brown one. Don't be afraid. Aha! We got a brown one. Seems to accept you as master. What should we name our horse, Christian? It's a brown horse. Brownie. Yeah. Come here, you brownie, you fuck.
There we go. Double click it, we can ride it. Now we can move a lot faster. Sweet! We got a horse! I can move a lot faster, that helps. We're gonna tame, we got taming trained, right? We should be able to tame an elephant, right? It'd be so cool if we could tame an elephant and ride it. Far away. You have no chance of taming this. Kind of what I thought. The hell of a lot better for traveling the land, though. Farmer. Oops, I didn't have to go into combat. You're trying to get all this... All these carrots, man. And onions. Good. Watermelons. Oh, we're too overburdened. Fuck. Hey. Their loyalty. 100%. Follow. Come here, bitch. You're not very listening very well. Oh, okay, yeah, you are. You want an onion, motherfucker? Hey, come here. I want to give you an onion. Come here. You're supposed to be following me. Not running away from me. What are you doing? What are you doing? Get your ass back here. 100% loyalty, my ass! Have a fucking onion, motherfucker! Oh my god. Ah! Yep. <laughs> now it's following me! I didn't even mean to do that! <laughs> oh, this is cracking me up. <laughs> oh, oh, this is funny. Wow. All right. Welcome to stream, everybody. <laughs> Come here, motherfucker. Jesus Christ. You honorary fucking horse. Notice how if I get off of it, it goes really far away from me. Like, how am I supposed to... I know what I'll do. I'll tell it to stay. Stay, motherfucker. There you go. There, that works better. Now, have an onion. I'll give you an onion. Okay. You like it. Your pet looks happier. He likes onion. Think a horse would eat an onion in real life, Christian? That looks happier. Okay. Hmm. 
Oh, guys, there's something else I forgot about here that I wanted to come and do. How much money do I have? 92 gold? Let's go see if we can turn this 92 gold that we have. Uh, you better quit casting spells on me, motherfucker. Alright. Before we do anything, let's go back into the bank here. We're going to... Give me our guys back. We're gonna make a blue motherfucker. One extra bag, except we're gonna make a. Or do we not have orange? But getting very hungry. Put our ingots in. Keep our money out. Trying to sort all our But put our blacksmith. All this random shit would just. This is what I want, yeah. Alright. Yep, because up here I saw a place where we can gamble. We can play Blackjack 21, guys. For money. And that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna try to fucking. How cool is this? We can bet 10, we can bet whatever we want here. 50. We can't bet like 20, so you can only bet 50. We don't have 100. Unless it takes it from our bank. Oh. Allowed us to bet. Take it from our bank? Let's fucking see. Play. Yeah, it won't let us. Insufficient gold to play, okay. Let's bet 50. Play. 9 and a 4 against an 8? Oh, fuck you. Fuck you. We're gonna have to hit. Ooh, 20, nice, and we win. Just fucking got 50 bucks. Your sands, gambling blackjack. Okay, we're going, we're betting 50 here. No, we're, we're betting 100. I feel, I'm feeling lucky here. Boom. Uh, we, we can't double down, right? There's your phone, so double down. We're gonna hit. Yeah, that's why I wanted to double down. Of course we're gonna stand. We're not gonna hit on 21, you dumb fucking computer. Alright. And now we have 200. If only we could have doubled down there. Only we could double down. A blackjack, three hundred and fifty. Nice. 
All right, I think we're gonna stop while we're ahead here, guys. We have three. We just turned like a hunt. No, we turned 96 into 300. Let's uh, cash out. Oh yeah, 332 gold. That was fun. Oh. Alright guys, I'm back. So I think what I want to see here right off the bat here guys is we are in Britain right now. And I think I want to see if there's a good way to trade like, if I make this, uh, character a blacksmith, for example, that ends up being able to make really good, uh, items and stuff like that, and then I, basically I make this guy a miner, tinkerer, uh, blacksmith, stuff like that, somebody that's probably not going to be the best at fighting, and then I want to make another character that's really good at fighting, that has all the combat skills and stuff like that, I want to know if there's a way I can... You know, use this guy to make armor and weapons and stuff like that for another character. And be able to, you know, trade. I can't... I went to a carpenter, I don't see a quick way to make a house. Or to... Um... You know, build a house. There might be a way to build a house, but... I don't think it's exactly like it works in Ultima Online. So... What I'm going to do here is right outside the Bank of Britain here. Let's say that I want to leave this Lesser Cure Potion for another character. And let's also say I want to leave some money, right? Let's say I leave 15 gold. If I just put this down here, and now I log out, can I make another character and log her into Britain and, you know, pick that stuff up. So let's see if that works, guys. And taming. Already read all that. We know what we're going to do in here. We're going to come in here. We'll sit down. Uh. We will. We're just wanting to start in the city of Britain. Yep. Back what we want. Okay. Okay. We just want to see if we have the items left for us. That I left with my other character. Okay, am I? Oh, we're way over in the can you roll the map here? Oh. I wanna see if these items are left for us that I drop on the ground. They are. Cool. So all you have to do is, like, leave items on the ground in the same town or whatever. And, uh... That's awesome. Whirl! Ooh, a tiger. Not gonna come after me? Oh, it is. Fuck. Alright. We'll try to insert this tiger will probably fuck me up in a hurry. I am fully healed. Come here, tiger, you bitch. We're gonna try to fucking get killed. Sure, the tiger will take out. Ooh, let's do a tiger against the elephant. There we go. Oh, I played poorly. Never mind. I thought it, I thought it worked. There we go. Yeah. 
yeah, the elephant's gonna fuck it up. Oh, it's not even close. What you get for fucking with me, tiger? Bitch. Damn, look at this fucking elephant. It's, it's still bleeding. Curious what kind of, uh... Yeah, nothing special. One meat. Nothing special on a tiger. There's no tiger hides or nothing cool. Damn. Two inches away, you're too far away. Oh my god, I can't. I suck at playing music, I guess. Just bite your finger. Fuck. We're trying, guys. We're trying. Two big beasts are not very happy with me right now. <laughs> And I am not having any luck at all at provoking these fuckers to fight each other. Want me? There we go. A time. There. That is a war. That is a motherfucking war. Good fight, man. That's a close fucking fight. Fully matched. Oh. Man, that's a close, close battle. Will they kill each other? They're still mad at me. Like, all right, I'm coming after you. You gained some fame. I gained more than a little fame. Wow. Everything else I've killed with either character has been, um. Are you not mad at me anymore? No oh, you are. I want to carve this guy up and see. What does an elephant have on it? Far away, really? <laughs> In at the hides right now. Right, I'm gonna guess like what 20, 24 hides? 32 hides. Wow. 12 pieces of meat. Big fucking beast. 32 hides, huh? Probably have to play in this game more soon. I want to go and thank you guys for watching. If you guys enjoyed it. Single player... Single player... Version of Ultima Online. Having a blast with it. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. We will see you guys here soon.